So by that rule, right, two seven. So thirty percent of this room is uh, recovering physicists. <laughs> I think that's true. You can you can write it down. All right. All right. Mike Miller of Cloud. And I'm the last thing between you and a drink, so I'll try to keep it quick. Uh, um, and give us a second here. So yeah. All right. So it's a lightning talk. I'll try to be fun with this um, in, in the spirit of Data Chick and tell you why database as a service is not a thing that you're just going to consider as weird, but a decade from now, it's our last hope. So what do I mean by that? I promise a quantitative argument. So I'm going to start with a little bit of, of philosophy, my first postulate, I guess, of humans. We don't get exponential growth, right? It's the reason that we continue to fill up our planet. It's the reason that we continue to uh, grow actively into limited resources. That folded with reality is going to get us to this conclusion, which is that in a decade, you're not going to dream of installing your own database. Okay, this is my takeaway, and now I'm going to try to convince you of it. So my apologies to the DBAs in the room, but I think that, you know, my goal is to extinguish your field, right? That's where we're headed. And I'm just going to be upfront and blunt about that because it's going to allow you to do other things, right? You want to be the Instagrams of the world. So how do we get there? We're going to start with the Large Hadron Collider and when I honestly learned what it means to be ex exponential. This is a picture of uh, one of my colleagues on the floor. It's a five-story device at CERN, a couple hundred meters underground. This thing makes data at about an exabyte a second. And I can get to that calculation for the physicists in the room later on. But the interesting thing is you can't dream of recording that, right? You cannot dream of recording all that digitized data. This is the thing that, that actually samples that, but there's a collider, you know, buried under the mountains that creates, you know, something like, um, in every 10 nanoseconds, there's a collision that lights up this, this entire device. And that collider itself, you can think of it like a big flashlight, okay? It's got beams of particles. And they get brighter and brighter year over year, and the net result is about every two years through various, uh, various kind of uh, knobs you can turn and tune, this thing doubles in the amount of data that it could potentially produce. And it took me a while to understand what that meant. It meant that every two years, I would record enough data that represented the entire amount of particle physics data with a squint to the physicists in the room. That means that everything we had ever discovered in physics could be replicated in two years, right? So as a grad student, it's like, oh, I can just redo everything, right, with that data. It took me a while to understand what that really meant, and that's playing out right now. So this is, you know, I, I cited something to try to find um, the doubling time of, of the volume of data that we have, digital data in the world, and, you know, it's doubling something like every two years, okay? So right now, I think in 2009, we're sitting at about one zettabyte, 10 to the 21, so I think that's a trillion gigabytes. Right? And so that means if you go two more years, you've doubled that. Okay? Let's think about, you can draw a line anywhere on this graph and say, I, I care about here, right? I'm at 400, what does it take to go up to 800 zettabytes? Well, it means that on the left side, I have the entire history of humankind, and on the right side, I have the entire history of humankind, plus two years. Okay? So two years. So as a vendor, I am focusing on the new stuff, right? This is all new. Right? And what we know is what's in our brains and our history, which is all of the old stuff. So while we think it's crazy to move data on, into the cloud, right? when I started the company, I said, we're going to take your database, we're going to put it on the internet, we're going to put it everywhere, right? like, like Akamai for your database. And people said, that's crazy. Right? But the reality is that solves a lot of new problems, which I want to talk about now. So these two things have broken our model of computing. If you're a developer, say it with me, the LAMP stack is dead. Ten years from now, it's not going to work. Right, the, this story I just told you about data volume, it's true of connected internet devices too. Right, we've long since passed uh, the place and time where the number of connected devices is larger than the number of humans on the globe. Right, we're way past that. So these two things conspire to break the way that we build our stack. Right, and it is all being reinvented. That's why it's such an awesome time to be a founder in this space. Name anything, it's all being reinvented from scratch. Right. And it's being reinvented, not necessarily by the big names in the field, but by people writing Ruby on Rails apps that have to solve these problems. That's where NoSQL came from in the first place. And yeah, if Fusion IO was cheaper in 2008, NoSQL may not have happened for a long time, right? It's just a response. So there, there are these market pressures, and the things that are coming out of this, I think, are two big examples are NoSQL and cloud services, right? So our company in Cloudin is database as a service. We ship with a mobile strategy. Uh, come see me if you want to know what that means. But if you look at where this falls in the realm of other cloud products, you know, our competition is Amazon. Um, we're a small company. You may never have heard of Cloudant. We're probably the smallest company with eight-digit revenues that you've never heard of in the NoSQL space. Um, but the reason is because this market is really, really good, right? And you want to be in a really good and fast-growing market. And this is the fastest-growing product that AWS has ever rolled out. So if you're interested, come join those in mobile gaming, in the enterprise, in big mobile, um, and come talk to me afterwards over BL. 
fear uh, for some of these uh, arguments. Thanks. All right.